Hey guys, so this is video number three. Uh, I'm just going to give you an update and we're going to go over some simulation flights. Uh, I want to show you some things. Um, I've already pulled it out, pull it out of the jig here. And um, so everything looks all right. You see how my fillets are kind of, there's gaps, so I'm going to fill those back in. I've wiggled the fins. I can't do it while holding the camera, but I've wiggled the fins and they seem on, they seem like they're on there pretty good, so... Um, when we start hitting some pretty high speeds this should be fine and i hope the uh, paper like how i put these on i hope that works out pretty good but i will put another um i'll run another bead on this because you see the gap there so i'm not really feeling that so i'll fill those in again now i'm gonna leave the the rocket bare like this for its first flight for its maiden and uh if i get it back then it gets its colors and so the color that I want to go with this is a red like a cherry red and then I'm gonna do the little lightning bolt symbol for um, the flash and so essentially this rocket will be called Barry Allen not the flash but Barry Allen um, so and you can see I need to put the retainer on and we need to go and look into the uh, the rock sim simulator but this build is pretty much done. I just need to figure out if I need to put weight in the uh, cone or not. So let me um, go ahead and put the retainer on. And we can look into the simulator. But let's go ahead and do the retainer first. Okay, so for the retainer, I am going to use the two part epoxy. And I'm using the six minute um, dry time. This is real quick. I also use the 24, but uh, for this one, I'm going to use the uh, 6 minute. And I got some new tubes. I didn't realize I already had some in my, uh, my little toolbox. But so if you look closely, I scuffed it and I've scuffed the, oh, scuffed the inside. I really got to get myself a little tripod. But <clears throat> so I'm going to put these on. And I also forgot, I also got to put on the. Uh, these rails too so I'm gonna glue these on with the two-part epoxy also since it's uh, plastic to paper I want to use a two-part and uh, not use the wood glue the wood glue only works well with paper on paper or you know wood on wood cardboard so I'll do it this way and uh, let me go ahead and get this stuff mixed and the way this works is just you know two parts so it's two parts of equal amount and then you mix it in you can put a little bit of hard a little bit more hardener to get a faster dry time but then you gotta work fast. Um, this stuff sets up pretty quick, so just you know, mix up plenty, and um, you can just discard the rest. I use uh, these little notepads, then I just throw them away. That works pretty good. But uh, so let me go ahead and get this started, and uh, I'll come back. Okay, so before I started gluing everything, I wanted to line everything up. Um, as you can see here, I lined up the rail guides on the lines and I've also sanded them so I, I didn't show that step earlier but I sanded them and then I put the rocket on my um the stand here which I can probably do a video on sometime <clears throat> anyway so I put it on here to keep everything nice and level nice and smooth but I am going to put the rails on first at the same time or right after I will do the uh, the retainer but I want to do all of it in one shot and then I'll go back and add the fillets after. But so this is what it looks like. How they're lined up. They're a foot apart. Um, and these are the ones that I got from uh, Apogee Components. They look really nice. And I actually, when I was sanding them, I noticed that they, these are 3D printed. So maybe if I can get some money invested, I'll buy me a 3D printer too. I don't know. We'll see. So let me do this and I'll, I'll get back to it. Okay, guys. So... You see that I've glued on the retainer and the rail guides. <clears throat> now I did sand the body tube, so I don't know if I mentioned that earlier. But I did sand them. And now it's sitting and drying. Uh, make sure everything is lined up. I checked it like three times just to make sure. And I'll check it again to see if everything still lines and nothing moved. <clears throat> and then, let me see if I can zoom in over here. You really can't tell. But, so... When you push on the retainer, the glue gets inside the tube there, so 
I scoop some out or I scrape some out, sorry. And then, oh, this thing keeps going back and forth. It's probably doing an auto zoom. It doesn't know what to zoom into. Sorry about that, guys. But, so, then I scrape some out. And then once it dries, I'll go back with a uh, sandpaper and I'll smooth it out. Because I've had the problem where uh, these motors, they'll get stuck. Like you can see on this one. Now, guys, these motors are, they have been used. So they're empty. They're just, I'm using these as a uh, fitment. But you can see how the paper right there. So I've had issues where the retainers and the glue in there. So I have to make sure everything is sanded out and smooth. Basically bore it out with some sandpaper. Let me make this straight again. So I'll let this guy dry up. And then uh, I'll get to the simulation. And we'll go look at that. Okay guys? So while I was sitting here letting it dry, I was kind of like watching paint dry. I was like, well, might as well just run a bead. So I ran a bead of glue, another layer of glue on the fins, and we'll let that dry too while it's all sitting up. But uh, I'm going to run inside, and we'll look at the simulator. I just thought I'd show you all this because um, it was an addition to what I was doing. So, All right, so this is the uh, Roxim program that I was telling you about. And uh, here you can see the Star Orbiter I have drawn out. Now typically you can find a Roxim file that someone's already done and you can take it and then do whatever you want with it. But being this rocket is a newer rocket, um, I couldn't find one on the internet or anything. So I went ahead and just did it all myself. Did all the dimensions, did all the, uh, the fins and everything. And so let me, I'll break it down for you. So... If you see these two dots, that one's the center of gravity, and I'm getting a little shaky, and that one is the center of pressure, right? And here you can see I have a motor loaded in right now, and it's giving me, it's giving me a, oh, sorry, 1.79, so you see a 1.79 margin of stability, and that's pretty decent, um, so the rule of thumb is anything more than one, and about less than two, so I think up to two is good. And I, I think I've seen people go above two. So um, um, they say the sweet spot is 1.7 and one and one and a half. Now some people have flown at one, but um, I would I personally would probably try to stay between one and two, maybe even one and a half and two. Um, so let me see. So the engine I have loaded in right now is a G38. So it seems like a good one. And let me see. And it's got the length of the overall, the diameter. The span diameter, the span diameter is actually the diameter of the, the fin tips. And then it has the mass, so the rocket weighs uh, 11.8 ounces. And then the name right there, Barry Allen. So if I get it back, that's all what I'll name it. So if you look up here, <clears throat> you'll see the different motors that I've loaded in. Just to kind of see and get an estimated idea of how high it'll go. And my screen share is about to come on. So you see I've tried the F26, a G40, a G80, H55 is what I really want to do, but I'm scared of the fins might fall apart. <clears throat> what else do I have in there? The F25, an F50, and a G38. Now a G38 is what I have in there right now. What I might fly first is an F26, or I might just jump up to do the G38. I'm not sure yet. Um, and it also depends on... Um, the motors, so there's a motor guy that goes out there to the launches and I buy the motor from him, kind of keep him business. Instead of ordering stuff off the internet, it's cheaper just buying it from him. And a dog just walked in, I don't know if you heard that. So, it's kind of based on whatever he has in stock. So I think he does have G38s, they're really popular, G40s are really popular, and the F26. And I think he has another F size, I'm not sure which one it was yet. But, so, we'll see what he has. And then if I get the rocket back with the F and a G, then I'll I'll look into doing the H. So we'll see. Hopefully I get it back and I get a paint job on this little guy. Okay, so up here I made a list of the motors. And if you look here, I made uh this is all the uh the margin of stability. So the F25 is a 211, F26 is a 205. The F50 is a 223, the G38 is a 179, and the H55 is a 150. So I think the H55 and a 150 should be pretty good. 
I don't think I'll, I'll have to add any nose weight. I'm kind of iffy on the F26, but I, I think I still I still will try it. I mean, why not? And then the G38, like I said, um, is a 179, which was what it was in the bottom. And uh, and then down here, here is the 3D mode of the racket, but it's kind of hard holding the phone and trying to work the mouse and everything on this laptop. So this program is really good if you're looking into building rockets or um, scratch building because uh, for a level 3 you have to scratch build a rocket and um, you got to show the build process and your rocks and vial in order to get your level 3 certification I think I think that's how it works but I mean I only have my level 1 right now I'm trying to get my level 2 um, once I get this rocket the cricket done I have another rocket that I want to build but that's just a um, kind of just um, you know something that I want to do and then I'll start working on my level 2 and and it's gonna be a dual deploy with all the cool electronics which I think some of you that are watching these videos are, are, are probably looking forward to so that'll be kind of cool I'll have to start buying all the electronics and everything and I kind of know what I want to do I, I want to buy a strata logger and all that cool stuff so she is ready for maiden I'm gonna go down the whole body you can see some of the imperfections you see my coupler imperfection, there's a rail guide, there's a rail guide, the fans, and the retainer ring. So, everything is good. I've already honed out in here, there's no light, sorry about that guys. But I honed that out already, I've already test fitted the other motor tubes. And this go like this. So this is the way she's going to fly on Saturday. And one more pass. And let me back up. So that's the way she's going to fly on Saturday. And then if I get it back, hopefully I do. Um, it's kind of windy right now. I don't know if you can hear it. So hopefully it doesn't stay like that till Saturday because then it's going to be very bad. But <clears throat> you see the uh, top shot up top shot up top. I got that one for $6. And uh, it's it's been one of my most flyers it's a frequent flyer I've flown it about five times I think and then the majestic down there I've flown that one on an F26 and it went up pretty high I actually had to go out in the woods and go get it and the wind blew it out so I used too big of a uh, parachute and it took too long to come down but um let me come back down here give it one last pass so there are the fans looks everything looks really good so hopefully if everything turns out well, this thing will have a nice coat of paint for the uh, next go around the flights. So, all right, guys. So, uh, wish me luck, and uh, hopefully I get it back. And hopefully, uh, it pleases the crowd. I mean, that's what I kind of do this for to please the crowd. So, thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you later.